Jesus controlled everything that would take place. Behind, Jesus willingly, deliberately surrendered himself into their hands. Why? So that our redemption might be won through his sacrificial death on the cross. He endured illegal trials. He endured the mocking. He endured the beard being pulled out of his face. He endured the spit. He endured the blindfolds. He endured the scourge that took the skin off his body. He endured the pain of shame. He endured the fact that Pilate was a weak man who caved into the shouts of the crowd. Crucify him! Crucify him! Give us Barabbas! And ordered Jesus to be crucified. Jesus hung suspended between heaven and earth, naked and nailed to a cross. Old Simeon was right when he told his mother Mary, a sword will pierce your soul. Certainly Mary's pain was great as she watched the Son of God die. And then Jesus said many significant things. But on that cross, Jesus said, with just the very breath that he could muster as he raised up on that cross. Father, forgive them. Think about that as you think about your own life. Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. The sky turned black. The earth shook. And Jesus bore in his body all of my sin. As the Father turned away from him. And he experienced all of the wrath of God. So that I wouldn't have to. And then he raised up on that cross one more time. And he proclaimed, It is finished! To God be the glory. All the prophecies of his birth, all the prophecies of his life, all the prophecies of his death were fulfilled. He, the Lamb of God, had endured the wrath of God for our sins. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many have been made righteous. So the question is, who is Jesus? The answer is this. Jesus is the virgin-born Son of God, the second Adam who lived a sinless life, to die and shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, to suffer the full wrath of God in my place. Full atonement! Can it be? Hallelujah! Who is Jesus? He is my Savior. Is he yours? Because most of the world, most of the world right now would call me a fool. What about the resurrection? Early on that Sunday morning, though a stone lay across the covering of the entrance of the tomb, though Mark tells us that it was a huge stone and the ladies were wondering how they were going to get in, though a seal was placed on the grave, though a guard was watching the tomb, 
Though the devil and his demons were dancing thinking they had won. At just the precise moment. To the shock of every person ever born. To the shock of those Roman go, go, guards standing outside that tomb. To the shock of the demons and the devil himself. Up from the grave he arose. Victorious. Our God lives. Powerful. That's what makes Christianity different from every other religion in the world. Jesus is alive. Oh, death, where is your victory? You have none. Because Jesus beat you. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the virgin-born Son of God who died in my place and by his own power on the third day rose alive and victorious from the grave. Where is he and what is he doing right now? The Bible tells us that Jesus, in Ephesians chapter 1, is seated at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but the one to come. The Bible says that Jesus is in his place of authority, fulfilling the duties as our permanent high priest. He is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he lives to make intercession for us. Satan can accuse me. Satan can accuse you. But Jesus is there to plead our case with his blood. On the basis of his shed blood, we stand forgiven, clean, and righteous before God. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the virgin born son of God who is my advocate before the Father. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. And He is my King. So I ask you, what about the future? Listen to me. The gentle Lamb of God who lay in Mary's arms. That perfect lamb, that sacrifice who hung on the cruel cross of Calvary. That perfect sacrifice of God who experienced the full wrath of God upon himself. Who bore all of my sins in his own body. All of them. That perfect lamb who on the third day rose again from the dead. That perfect lamb who is seated at the right hand of the Father will, at just the precise moment, at just the, uh, at the moment of the Father's time, the lion of the tribe of Judah will come again as a conquering king and a judge of all peoples and nations. I ask the question, who is Jesus? He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he is coming again.
I quit with these final three thoughts as we remain standing, please. Number one, looking at the first advent or the first coming of Jesus when he came through the, virgin, the birth canal of the Virgin Mary, we can be encouraged because Jesus is real and our lives today can be founded upon his solid truth. Number two, looking at the resurrection we can have a real relationship with Jesus by his power and we can live honest and holy lives and then finally number three looking at today looking inside your own heart and life you can be ready for the time Jesus comes back for his people and establishes his kingdom. But folks, there is only one way to be ready. You must bow at the cross. You must bow.